learner, incapable of doing all I would like to do in God's service. My whole desire is to do the little that is in me. Worldly people have won severe punishment at the devil's hands, and their pleasures have richly earned them eternal fire. So, to eternal fire they will have to go. Nonetheless, it breaks my heart to see so many souls traveling to perdition. I wish the evil were not so great, and I did not see more being lost every day. Let us not pray for worldly things, my sisters. It makes me laugh, yet makes me sad, when I hear of the things that people have come here to beg us to pray to God for. We are to ask the Lord for money and to provide them with incomes. I wish some of these people would petition God to enable them to trample all such things beneath their feet. I do not believe that God ever hears me when I pray for such things. The world is on fire. No, my sisters, this is no time to pray for things of little importance. God should not be entreated with such anxiousness for things like these. It would be a good exchange to give up everything for the enjoyment of everlasting abundance. Those who do care nothing for the good things of the world have dominion over all of them. I believe that honor and money nearly always go together. People who long for honor never hate money, while those who hate money do not care much about honor. who does not need anyone has many friends. I have found this to be true from my own experience. It seems very wrong, my daughters, that great houses should be built with poor people's money. May God forbid this. Those who build large houses no doubt have good reasons for doing so. God preserve us from building a large ornate convent with a lot of buildings. Always remember that these things will fall down on the Day of Judgment, and who knows how soon that will be. If prayer is to be genuine, it must be helped by these other things, the fast, the disciplines, and the silence. Prayer and comfortable living are incompatible. Three practices to help you possess inwardly and outwardly the peace of the Lord. Love for each other, detachment from all created things, humility. Together, they form a foundation for prayer. It is easier to be silent if one is alone and to get used to solitude is a great help to prayer. Those who have devoted themselves to being taught by God in prayer love very differently from those who lack such devotion. You should not care whether you are loved or not unless the love is for your spiritual benefit. We must practice detachment, for if we perform it perfectly, it includes everything else. If we embrace the Creator and care not at all for the whole of creation, His Majesty will infuse the virtues. Doing little by little what we can, we will have hardly anything else to fight against. It is the Lord who in our defense takes up the battle against the demons and against the world. If we keep the vanity of all things constantly in our thoughts 
and how quickly everything comes to an end, we will be able to withdraw our affections from trivial things and fix them on eternal things. When we begin to become attached to something, we should strive to turn our thoughts from it and bring them back to God and His Majesty helps. True humility and detachment from self always go together. Our body has one fault. The more comfort we try to give it, the more things it discovers it has to have. It's amazing how much comfort it wants. Learn to suffer a little for the love of God without telling everyone about it. <laughs>